Hey G.I. Joe fans, we're setting the way back clock to 1986. Time of breakdancing, neon, and punker rat tails. So let's crack open a cold one and join me for the 1986 G.I. Joe Law. That's right, it's the law. It's the law that you watch this. time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Thought I would try something a little bit different with kind of starting off with a intro before the title music. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, after all this, I know it's my channel that I run, but it's for your entertainment purposes. Let me know if you like it. I'll keep it in. If you don't, you know, it's not a problem. It's an experiment and at times experiments do not work. So, I am here to entertain you, not vice versa. So, there we have it. Uh, it's cracked open a nice cold cherry Pepsi. Don't tell my urologist. Because it is shown that uh, soda does cause kidney stones. Phosphoric acid strips calcium off your bones and everything gets filtered through your kidneys calcium stays in and builds a stone it's science alrighty so we are going to be looking at the 1986 GI Joe law one of the more interesting play sets uh, yojo.com lists it under vehicles for mere convenience uh, this is one I actually wanted as a kid. Uh, it looked like it'd be really fun to play with outside. And for us diorama builders, it looks excellent in a diorama. Uh, I have it set up with um, my four watchtowers, my bivouac, and mobile missile system uh, on a diorama. This is a great little playset. Uh, never played with it as a kid. Um, didn't have it as a kid. And like I had mentioned before, it is one that I wanted, uh, but I didn't have that many G.I. Joe figures uh, at that particular time. So, having um, that really wouldn't have made well it would have made sense but it wouldn't have been as fun I think because I didn't have very many figures to play with I could have used it as you know a robotic ambush type system or even put my um, Star Wars figures in it but for some reason Star Wars and G.I. Joe just didn't look right together for me it made me feel kind of weird playing with the two together so they were always in separate um entities and playtime and ironically Hasbro bought out Kenner later on down the road so uh, at 86 I was still collecting G.I. Joe but I was playing more with Masters of the Universe uh, I always depended on my buddy John for uh, G.I. Joe playtime uh, was, after all, the kid had everything under the sun, and so that that uh, met my need of having G.I. Joes to play with. 
and uh, it was actually 86 was the summer that he uh, moved away and went home uh, moved moved away and started living with his dad and um, I mean that that was just devastating I mean he and I were like Laurel and Hardy uh, just we were inseparable so that was real hard um, for him to um, having him move and uh, I've tried very hard to locate him but you know with the name of John Hancock there are literally thousands of John Hancocks in social media so it's very difficult for me to find him aside from hiring a private investigator which I just don't have the finances to to do right now uh, I would. It's like, I, I want to know what happened to him. I'm pretty sure he joined the military like his brothers, and I, I hope that um, he's still around. Honestly, I, I would like to see what what uh, came of him. So, anyway, here we are, 1986 G.I. Joe Law. It stands for one of the wonderful acronyms that Hasbro created. Law means laser artillery weapon. Now, when I think of artillery, I think of a howitzer, a cannon, a mortar. Something that fires a projectile and an arc for long distance reach I guess a laser could arc but light really doesn't bend and laser is light unless you fire it into a black hole then it will bend and it, it takes quite a bit of effort to bend light I know scientists have achieved that but it is quite difficult to do light is linear travels in a straight line so how can a laser be artillery in a child's imagination darn right that laser beam could shoot up an arc and hit your target it hit the toy store shelves in 1986 it came boxed it was on the shelves through 87 when it was discontinued in 88 with discontinued it does not mean it wasn't on the shelves in 88 it just means hasbro stopped producing them in 1988 so I'm pretty sure there were some on the shelves in 88 possibly 89 if there wasn't a um, not a recall but uh, a lot of manufacturers will ask for retailers to send back their surplus and that's how things ended up in Hasbro direct because they were getting back surplus and taking it out and uh, selling it on Hasbro Direct. Its original retail price is $2.39. This was a relatively easy toy to put together. It only had six parts, surprisingly. It is a very simple design, very simple to put together. This would have been one I wouldn't have looked at the directions. I would have just looked at the parts and said, hey, this is how it goes together, and used the directions to apply the decals. So $2.39, again, it was around the same price as a an action figure, so it was one of those really cool vehicle slash play sets that a child could purchase inexpensively and still have accessories to play with their action figures on. And I love the fact that Hasbro did that. It's not every kid could afford the larger vehicles, larger play sets, um, like the Conquest came out in 86, the Tomahawk, you know, kids in a, from a fixed budget family couldn't afford those bigger vehicles on a regular basis. I'm sure a lot of kids such as myself got those at Christmas when it was a little more special and parents budgeted for that. So these, these smalls, as they are known, amongst the collectors were the ones that I would go after if I were wanting to buy a vehicle or 
a smaller play set, but me, I always bought the action figures. I could do more with them. So let me pull up those pictures of how it looked boxed. I love the art on these boxes and the card backs. There's just something about it, and I know for a fact that I'm not the only kid that just sat there for hours looking at the card backs and studying the pictures and looking at them in catalogs and studying those pictures to stimulate my imagination. So here we go. Let me pull up those pictures for you and then we'll get into the review. All right, so here it is. I have Sergeant Slaughter manning the law because Sergeant Slaughter could do everything and he came out that year. And I am so jazzed to finally have this Sergeant Slaughter version one. He was one I've been chasing after for a long time. Who does not like the Sarge? You know, good question. And I want to thank Bjorn Jacob for helping me acquire Sarge. I uh, had um, sold some parts to him that he needed. And I flipped that money around and bought Sergeant Slaughter. So thank you, Bjorn. I really appreciate your help with that. So here we go. Here is the law. It is a low profile platform, as we will call it. It had this 360 degree rotating cannon, which does come off very easily. So I will show that to you. So this is part number one. Uh, part number two was the tip of the cannon. The cannon did come in two separate pieces, so I'm not counting those two individual parts, but this is just one main part. So that would probably be seven parts. But the cannon has excellent detail on it. Uh, hollow at the tip. This, I'm sure, is a laser finder or a laser sight of sorts or range calculator range finder very nice detail on this has this sticker that reads danger very very nice part number two was the the cradle the cannon cradle which this simply snaps into and the allows the cannon to move down and somewhat up. Very cool play feature. Uh, just, let me pop this off. It slots right into the base there on these two pegs. Uh, this is made out of a, the softer gray plastic. Very durable. The base is made from the similar material as the vamp, but look at the details on that. Uh, it says instrument cover right here, has some electrical conduit, cylinder access, whatever the cylinder is, I'm assuming it's some sort of a coolant, uh, a radiator of sorts, or this could even, oh no, this is, this is a grate hatch. It's a, a grating. It's a hatch that you'd open to access the electronics on the inside. Pretty cool. Has very nice detailing here. What this little circle does, I have no idea, but perfect to slot a barrel in there from, let's say, the mortar defense unit. Uh, on the front here, there's a seat that uh, you have to assemble part number three, four, five, and six. And uh, the front here, let's look at the seat a little bit more. So it, it's padded, give that Joe a little bit of comfort. There's more machine type detailing here. And the computer, very nice panel removal stickers the panels do not remove and on the inside here more stickers it shows a 
computer, two com three computer screens. This one has some dials on it and such. Very cool and simple little toy. I do love this this play set. It is awesome. And I, I build dioramas, so this when I saw this uh, up for auction, I snatched it up. I think I paid maybe eight dollars for it in auction. Uh, I won't, I'll play with that later. But it's a cool little toy. Very low profile. Look really good on a forest floor and such. All right, so there you have it. The, co the Cobra Law. La, 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 la. Sorry to insult that toy. Uh, the G.I. Joe Law. Uh, this was interesting looking up the prices on eBay. It was when I would type in Law, I would get Cobra Law. Uh, I've got some of those figures on there. Um, I also got Law and Order. And when I typed in the acronym for Law, I still got Law and Order. And got the Law. So, Hasbro, they like to use the Law quite a bit. So, it is now time for my favorite segment. Byron's Gripes. Ah, nectar of the gods. Alrighty. So if you... My disclaimer. I picked these prices off of eBay. For those of you just joining me. I... Um, don't quote auction prices. These are just the fixed prices. Um, I only use eBay for the mere convenience not to pick on eBay nor the sellers. That's not what this segment is about. It's just more of a tool for you to, for those of you who are starting off collecting, to have a general idea of what the prices are like out there. So you would know what to... Um, budget for what's a good or a bad price but that's up to you what is a high or a low price it's beauties in the eyes of the beholder and the size of your bank account um, so for somebody who has nine thousand dollars to spend on toys which i hope someday um you know $35 for an action figure wouldn't seem all that much to me. But, you know, you know how it goes, guys. You're out there in the same boat as I am. So here we go. The law is pretty common. Uh, there are about three pages worth out there of these parts. To find it complete is a little... A little more interesting because people are taking these apart, which really annoys me. And, you know, the toy has been together all these years, and you're taking apart and selling the parts. Yeah, it's bittersweet for bitter because you're taking apart an antique and piecing it out. But it the sweet part of it is if you have that broken part on your toy or you're missing that part... They're available out there so you can complete. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword. So here we go. The gun mount, which I need for my other law. I have a second one that I bought um, several months ago. It's missing the gun mount. Got it from a gentleman in Canada. Um, he was selling... No, I'm not going to digress, but he was selling all of his toys and I bought them all. Um, incomplete or not. Um, so the gun mount, two ninety nine or two ninety five to four forty five, not bad. That that's pretty decent. Uh, surprisingly, it's a commonly missing part from what what I understand. 
the control panel, oh, $1.99 to $4.99. And shipping is really reasonable on these. And if the shipping is ridiculously high, I'll point that out. Uh, the computer console, more common part, or more popular part, I would say. Uh, these are ridiculous prices. Uh, because the console's kind of the the brain of this whole thing, and the gun being the heart. You can play with it without the seat. Uh, the computer, $1,350 to $1,999, the law of supply and demand come into play with this, and I think that's just ridiculous. People need to lower these prices so the 9 to fiber. The knuckle buster with the kids, the wife, the dog, the cats, uh, two cars and a mortgage and and uh, stuff. You know, those guys who are wanting to share their hobby with their children makes these higher prices make it harder to collect. Case in point, a gentleman reached out to me the other day on Twitter. And he said, I've been watching you here on Twitter. You seem to know what you're doing. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Seem is the, the key word there. Uh, it's like everybody else. We're learning as we go. But I, I appreciate the compliment. And he asked me, where can I buy inexpensive toys to get my children collecting again? Because they've been watching the reviews, everybody's reviews, and they're really interested in start playing with G.I. Joe again. Or to start playing, playing with G.I. Joe. And that just solidified everything I'm doing here. And he mentioned that eBay is really expensive. So I did a little research and told him that um, Small Joe's has some pretty good deals. Uh, pretty much anybody who advertises on um, yojo.com have decent deals. Especially told him to uh, research vintage toy stores in his neighborhood. Sorry, I'm squinting. I'm not wearing my contacts right now. Uh, so I, I gave him some tips where to look to find inexpensive toys. And I told him, you know, some prices are dropping on eBay. So, you know, watch out for those. Try to get in on auctions. So um, that made me feel good that he came to me and asked me for my advice. So the seats, the seat for the, the law, $2.65 to $2.99. Pretty good deal. The seat actually fits in there pretty snugly, so that wouldn't be a part that would fall off real easy. There's one that's mint and boxed, $79.86, mint and boxed. That is proper English, mint and box. $79.86. Uh, if I were a mint and box collector, I would go after that one. That is a fairly decent price. Uh, I won't put it up as deal of the day because it's really not cheap enough, but it's decent. Um, the base, uh, two ninety nine to eleven ninety eight. Oh, uh, eleven ninety eight. Yeah, that's that's a high end, but if you have the other parts, the base is okay you know 1198 but i would definitely go after the 299 and what was nice is the 299 was having to selling it for 275 with shipping or the 275 for shipping the barrel tip that the, the very end of it of um, 299 i could see that it it's the only one i saw on the list um it's not a part that comes out very easily but if it is a part you are missing it doesn't look right so you need that for the aesthetics the blueprints 425 that is right on target for that uh, it's about average for a, a blueprint and I, I like having the blueprints it's pretty neat seeing those again complete with box 1499 
$6.95 for shipping, deal of the day, all day long. I would love to have the box for this. I like the box art. I could just decorate my walls with the box art and the card back. Seriously, um, that's how much I, I, I love the card backs. $14.99, that is beautiful. I would pay that for the box alone, honestly. <coughs> Pardon me. Complete with blueprint, $25. And uh, it's not boxed, but $7.53 for shipping. That's a little high for shipping. Uh, $7.53, depending on the size of the box. Was the post office does. Um, Go by the me measurement on the box. 753 is pushing it. Um, and I can't remember the exact amount that they ins automatically insure for. But good luck trying to um, get your money uh, with that. Because I've filed a few claims with the post office that have been pending for a couple years now. For things that are shipped and damaged in transit. So I doubt I'll ever see that money. And who knows how many people are getting, uh, how that department is being, how flooded they are with all these requests and how many people are filing fraudulent requests. So maybe when I'm retired, I'll finally get a check for the flag case that I ordered for my dad's um, memorial flag. You know, that's neither here nor there. I just went out and bought a new flag case. Now, this is a toy that you could build cheaply on your own. Uh, watch for the shipping, um, but giving some of them that you could buy complete, it may or may not be uh, feasible if you, let's say, just have the base alone and you need to buy the, the other three parts to it, four parts. Uh, maybe you can build it in under $25 or $30, however much you feel would be a, that you would buy it complete for. Uh, that you could build cheap, build it cheap. So that's something I'm going to do with my next law, or my the law that I have that's missing the gun mount. I just need to buy that mount, and I'll have two of them, and one that I could use for a giveaway. So, there you have it, guys. There's Byron's Gripes. There's the review of the 1986 law. Let me know uh, what you think about this toy. Uh, what you, How would you have played with it? And how would you display it as an adult I mean, come on guys we're still playing with our toys aren't we even if we're you know doing action figure photography we're still playing with the toys doing stop motion videos which we're still playing with our toys doing review we're playing with our toys let's just face it we're we're, we're grown men and women playing with our toys <laughs> Gosh, you know, there's no rule out there saying because you're an adult, you don't have to play with your toys. You know, it's, we need recreation, right? So, there you have it. There's the review. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And when I reach 500 subscribers, I will be holding a giveaway for all of my subscribers. And i um, also be holding a giveaway for my um, channel supporters. And how do you hold, become a channel supporter? Well, you can do it uh, a few ways. One, you could make a donation or a donation to the channel. My mailing address will be down in the bottom. Uh, just you can mail something. I'll do an unboxing. Yeah, of course, give you credit um, and review that toy. Uh, you could also uh, make a, a monetary donation of any amount to either my coffee account 
or through PayPal. I'll have all that listed at the bottom. When you use PayPal, list it under my um, email, which will be listed in the description as well. And shoot me an email if you'd like. I love talking to you guys. I've cultivated a lot of friendships through not only through email, but um, through the comments. So definitely leave a comment. I respond to those. I just love talking to you guys. It, you know, the, the miracle of the internet. I've made friends around the world. So there you have it. There's the review. Uh, yeah, there's nothing left to say. All right, you guys, you take care. Stay safe. Always be kind to everyone, and especially be kind to animals. They know nothing but love and compassion. So this has been Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. Take care. We'll see you next week for another awesome G.I. Joe toy review. Bye-bye.